chapter 12. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thou thy way till the end be... For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Here in verse 4, Daniel tells us that there will be a great increase in knowledge. And I remember reading in books that were dated in the 1800s that were very learned scholarly treatises on how this chapter of Daniel was being fulfilled in the early to mid 1800s because of the invention of the steam engine, the sewing machine, the telegraph, and the steel making blast furnace, I mean whatever else. This was just incredible progress to those people. And now 150 to 200 years later, Imagine what those people would think about if they could have been transported from being alive back then to being alive now, sort of waking up like Rip Van Winkle after 150 years sleep, and all of a sudden they get a chance to see a Saturn V rocket taking off with a space shuttle on it, uh, a DVD player, TV, cell phone, uh, you know, modern tanks, nuclear weapons, all kinds of things they would have to say that all of the things that they saw and then that thought were so magnificent would be pretty puny compared to what we have. But there's something that is not even, I think, as brilliant as what they had. Our people, although they know more, are no wiser. As a matter of fact, most of us are not even as close to being as wise as people were then because then they had to depend more on prayer because they had less else to try to waste their time on. Now, I have seen hundreds of different types of publications where people have tried to calculate out when the Savior was coming back, when the end days were, when this was going to happen, when that was going to happen. And everybody forgets something. Heavenly Father knows, and he is not telling us. In verse 8 it says, And I heard, but I understood not. And then I said, Oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? In other words, when is all this going to happen? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. In other words, you're not going to know. As I said in the last chapter in the commentary, you're going is the big event in your life. Not the Savior's coming. You probably won't live long enough. You may not live long enough to see the Savior come. But you are definitely going to go. 
And the most important thing you can do is be ready today so that if you had to leave to go to the celestial eternal life tomorrow, today, this afternoon, five minutes from now, you're ready. You have done everything you can to repent of everything you can, make everything right that you can, do whatever you can, so that your life is an exemplary life to the very best you can make it that way. And I have seen hundreds of tracks and calculations and formulas and mathematical uh, calculations as to how the, this was that and this was that, and therefore he's going to show up in this. William Miller, I think that was the fellow's name, he was the founder of the Adventist movement, the Advent of the Savior. And he calculated that on some night, and I can't remember the month, I think it was the spring or summer, in 1844, the Savior was going to come. Now, Miller was a profound man. He was very wise, very smart, very charismatic. Had followings of tens of thousands of people, as I recall, neighborhood of at least 40,000 people. Figured he knew what he was talking about. And he had calculated this out, and he was able to reason it out and make it seem like it made sense. And so, on this particular night, the families that believed in Miller got on their white advent robes and got up on their roofs and faced east and waited for the Savior to come with the sunrise. And the sun went up and the Savior didn't come. And it got kind of hot on those roofs. And the people got down off the roofs and William Miller's advent movement sort of faded somewhat. And there were others who were part of the Campbellite movement and other movements that recalculated it as 1862, 1868, 1870 this, 1870 that, 1880 this. Finally, the Jehovah's Witnesses calculated 1914. And when that didn't happen, then they basically said, oh, well, he was installed in heaven. And that began the war with Satan, and that was World War I. And I've seen hundreds of these things over the time, and the, they're all sealed up. We have no key to understand what these things mean, so we're not responsible for understanding what they mean. Here's the point, though. You will one day die. We have no control over when that is going to be. It could be five minutes from now. It could be tomorrow. It could be the day after tomorrow. It could be five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, forty years, fifty years from now. We don't know. We're not sure when the second coming is going to be, but we do know this. You're going to leave this earth, and since you are not in charge of when that's going to be, it would make a lot of sense for you to be as ready as you possibly can. So if you're called to go, in five minutes, you've done what you can. Or tomorrow, you've done what you can. Or next year, you've done what you can to make your life the very best it could be. And that is the advice that the Lord gave to Daniel. Go thy way. In other words, Daniel, go do what you know to do. Live as righteously as you can live. And everything that you need to know will be looked after.